Welcome to Puppets for All, a new YouTube channel decorated to Britain. Dedicated. Okay. Dedicated to bringing the magic of puppetry to people of all ages. If you are a parent or a teacher or a child care provider looking for fun and educational activities, try sock puppets. Rawr! Hi, my name is Mary Benson. This tutorial will show two easy ways to make animal sock puppets. Even kindergartners can make their own unique puppets using these two methods. Oh, and no sewing is required. This tutorial could also be helpful for teachers, parents, and librarians who are looking for quick, easy, and cheap ways to make puppets for their classes or story times. Method one is a quick and easy way to make some really cute puppet characters. Um, you start with a slipper sock instead of a regular sock, one that has something on the bottom, something to make it, to give it traction. And as it said in the name of this method, the heel goes down when you put it on your hand and the heel becomes the lower mouth. Okay. All right, and then the next thing I do is take this adhesive back felt and cover up these little kid-free <laughs> plastic pieces. Cover them up. Okay, sometimes if they blend in with the color of the sock very well, all you need to do is put a tongue in, but in this case, they were pretty obvious. So go around, press it all around to make the nose. You'll need to put a big glob right here. Come on, glue. A right, big glob, because you want it right where her nose would be, right on the tip, the end of the sock. Okay, and I use a very big pom pom for the nose. This is a two inch one, I'm pretty sure, this pom pom. They are a little hard to find, <laughs> is what I've been finding. Okay, you might even want to trim this red piece once it is stuck pretty well, because sometimes it's a little bit too big. All right, push it there. There's the nose. All right, now you need the eyes. The eyes should be a little close to the end of the nose, like this. Okay. And the same thing. You can do it with tacky glue. Of course, you could also hot glue, but especially if you're making with, with kids, um, tacky glue, of course, is better. All right, we just have to put these. Lots of glue. Okay. And we have our big puffy eyes. These are also two and a half inch pom-poms. Let's give them a tongue. And then we need to put 
the glue where the tongue will attach. Okay, a nice long floppy tongue is good for this dog. Like it makes him cute. I'm going to take them off my hand I'm going to hot glue these edges slightly. And we may need to trim it a little. After doing the tongue, the children should probably lay out the puppet like this to let these dry. And while we're waiting, we can do the eyes and the ears. Just remember to put the eyes close to um, the, the bottom of the front of the ball so that they're looking forward. And of course, putting a little sequin in the very middle. Hope it dries clear like they say. Okay, put that right in the middle. And then put the sequin. Is that little sparkle? The ears, which these are fleece. Just glue the ears too, big globs of glue. And a good thing to do to, to give it a little bit of to give it a little bit of a shape. Put some glue in the middle and hold it like this. That's another thing they would need to set aside to dry. I'm going to use hot glue just um, for the sake of speed. There we go. So I'm just going to by doing this, it'll make it stick out more like an ear. It won't be so flat. This one too. Okay, now. Set's so dry. Put the ear on top of there. Oops, I will use hot glue again. <laughs> for the sake of brevity <laughs> and easiness. But of course, if you're, use, if you're working with young kids, um, of course, glue would best. Okay, there we go. So like that. And then, to give him a little fluff on the top, use a feather boa. Okay, measure it should go from this side to here. And when you cut feather boas, <clears throat> be sure to put a little glue on the end. Hot glue is good. So that the whole thing doesn't fall apart on you. It's, as you can see, it's already happening. All right, and I'll put some glue here. Of course, they could do that. with the white glue, of course. Okay, so let's give him a little bit of a hair. And I also want to glue this end while I'm at it. Okay. And he's ready to go. <laughs> very quick and easy way to make a puppet. And a very cute puppet, I think. The only thing, it's not quite as versatile as you might want it to be. Most of the things you need to make, that you can make with this, need to have a long nose. <laughs> okay, like it's very good for the alligator. I just gave him some teeth. Changed his eyes a little bit. Okay, so you can make an alligator. You don't need to use a slipper sock, but it helps. <laughs> the little um, anti-slip tread on the bottom gives it gives some support to the long nose that this type of puppet will have. It has a long nose. Um, a regular sock wouldn't have that and it probably would flop, but you can overcome that using 
Oh, he's a mess. Using craft foam instead of felt. So the craft foam will give it some of the stiffness it would need. So make a big piece using sticky back craft foam. two socks and I had actually turned this one inside out to get the fuzzier part on the on the top this will be the head this will go inside the head now I call it heels up because in this method the heel becomes the head so we start with it up and this becomes the mouth so first so we need to roll up this other sock which doesn't even have to match the first one Roll it. I show the kids how to roll it up this way. Put it on their arms. Roll it up over and over until it makes a ball. Sometimes it looks like a little donut. All right, then the next step is I show the kids how the puppet will be positioned with the heel up. And I have them take the ball and push it up into that heel area which makes the head shape. The next step is to take two safety pins and put them on each side of the head, going through and catching the ball that's underneath. When the kids are making this, I have them keep the puppet on their hand while an adult puts the safety pin in, catching the ball underneath. And let's see, there we go. All right, so now the ball should stay when they take the puppet on and off. All right. And I try to attach these where I would want to put the eyes um, because the eyes will cover up the pin. Okay, so the next step, now we have this shape, is the mouth. I've already started adding the features. This is white um, sticky back craft foam cut into circles. Um, I don't use buttons with kids because choking hazard. All they have to do is dip the edge of the of this and then stick it on. Now that's if you're a kid doing this, <laughs> a little kid. But as an adult, you could use hot glue, or an older child um, could use the lower temperature one. And to make them stand up a little better, you put a little glue in that middle part, stick together a few seconds, and then when you stick it on, it looks a little more like a real ear it's around it. So either way, I mean, the kids, if they do that, that's fine. Okay, and then also the eyes are just a piece, a little circle of black felt. Okay, and to make it look even more alive, you, see it? Um, you can put a sequin in the eye and it suddenly sparkles and comes to life. Okay, that's a little puppeteer secret. So we have a polar bear in just minutes. Sometimes you need to push the thing back into the right position. Okay, all right.
this head shape will work for medium sized animals like a tutti frutti zebra. With the zebra for the eye, I use the end of a plastic spoon. And this is called loopy chenille. This is great for animal hair, fur. Okay. Um, you can also make a dragon. Okay, now here in this dragon, I have to adjust him a little bit. There. I use bottle caps for his nose, nostrils, and feathers for the fire in his mouth. This is um, some more, it's not sticky back, but it's some more craft foam and a feather for his little bit of hair. Um, a donkey or a horse. Um, with this donkey, I use another bottle cap for the eyes. And this is a piece of craft foam covered with some material from um, an old sweatshirt. Or something like a pig, you could even put another sock in the nose to give it that shape. You could make a moose or a cow, they have that kind of a nose. By pushing the ball that's inside the heel up closer to the toe, you can make some animals with smaller noses, such as a cat or a groundhog or a bird. Here are some materials that the kids could use to make eyes and noses. Ping pong balls, styrofoam balls, and the cut off bowl of a plastic spoon. They could even use these little stickers on the spoon or on other items. And this is actually called eyelash yarn. And if you cut it in little pieces, they will use it for eyelash. And here are some of the materials that you could provide for the children to make their own ears, manes, tails, fangs, other teeth, antlers, wings, fins, or just to cover the surface of the puppet. You may have noticed I used some hot glue to tack down the felt, even though a lot of white glue would work if you left it and held it for a length of time. But what I would do in workshops is I would let the adults handle the hot glue guns, only the adults. I would have the kids bring plastic things to someone with the hot glue gun, and then they would put them on more securely. You could also use craft foam for the beak. 
but then you would definitely have to use a hot glue gun to attach it. <laughs> With children, I have them, if they're patting, attaching feathers, I have them just dip the end of the feather into a container of glue, see that, and then just apply. And the feathers will cover up the heel bump. Just let me try a little and I'll be ready to go. Can you tell what he is? <laughs> I think you can. Okay. Hopefully you think it looks like a T-Rex, <laughs> but it is missing teeth. So we're going to give it some teeth. And the way I do that is first I will measure how, how much of a strip of teeth I need to make and it goes to about there. Okay, and also we need little teeth for the bottom. Let's see if they're gonna fit. Yes, okay. 
Now this you definitely need hot glue for. All the way at the end, the lower teeth. It's easiest to put the glue on the edge of the teeth rather than the puppet, but I guess you can decide that. <laughs> All right. Okay. So let's see how he looks. Okay. Well, his teeth are a little bit out of. Another thing, I don't think they have ever made a glue, a glue gun stand that actually works. Now he needs one more thing to make him look like a T-Rex. And that's those little tiny hands in the front. And all you gotta do is poke, poke it through the wire in the pipe cleaner. Oh. Hopefully, <laughs> enable you to push it through without hurting too many of the strings. Okay, so pull it so it's about even. And then we want to give him three toes. Or maybe two. Oh, this two is good enough. Okay, there he goes. Excuse me. You could make almost any kind of animal, and even insects. To make this butterfly, just push the inside sock all the way into the toe of the outside sock. Give it the mouth. I made a short, smaller mouth for the insect mouth. And these are bottle caps and felt. And this is made of craft foam, but it could also be made of paper. Um, the kids would really enjoy coloring one of these. And to put in the antennas, you do the same, same, just what we did with the T-Rex. Just take a um, pipe cleaner, stick it through, and also same for the legs. So there are many different kinds of animals, insects, reptiles, birds that you could make. And the easiest animal of all to make is a fish. You only need one sock. And just use a smaller mouth, and you can use felt for the eyes or any of the other things that we um, have been using. And you can use feathers to make the fins and have the children decorate the body with magic markers. And cut the tail a little bit right here to make it give the shape of a tail, the V shape. And to give it some extra pizzazz, they can glue some sequins on it to give it that shiny and scaly look. So this is a very easy one to do with very young groups. If you would like copies of the patterns used in the making of the puppets in this video, please send your request to Harmony H Puppets at AOL.com. If you found this tutorial helpful, please consider subscribing to Puppets for All. And if you're looking for a live puppet show, please go to www.harmonyhillpuppets.com. Good job!